Hi again, welcome to the Garage on Pierre. This time around, we're uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the poor man's uh, source of uh, hardenable steel alloy bed frames. So uh, you get them like uh, most likely on garbage day. So if the scrapper didn't pass uh, just right before you, maybe you're lucky and pick up one. Um, I'm just doing this a little bit in response of a uh, this is a uh, fellow Canadian that uh, started a YouTube channel, and I think he's doing a pretty good uh, pretty good job. He's got good ideas. Is uh, maybe his main let's say uh, occupation is to be a mechanics. He's doing hobby, uh, you know. He's a hobbyist. He's doing some machining. He's nicely done. <laughs> nice editing, uh, by the way, Everett. You're, uh, you're doing much better than I started with. So uh, go see Everett's channel and uh, just in response to his uh, you know trials and uh, you know efforts to find some hardenable material. This is more like uh, maybe a little bit more control uh, test about. Uh, bed frame stuff. So let's proceed and see uh, see what we can do about it. I know it's not being very scientific, but uh, that's another tool that you can have in your uh, toolbox for determining the carbon content in steel. This is the actual uh, iron, uh, iron angle from the bed frame. Um, this I suspect to be like more than uh, half a percent of uh, carbon in there. So I'll be using a 60 grit grinding wheel, uh, producing the sparks, and we'll see the difference between this actual piece and this other piece which is coro steel with a very much lower uh, carbon content in there there's a uh, obvious difference and that's uh, I'll be I'll be doing some voiceover in the stopping on some pictures and you'll be uh, able to see some differences notice the sparks the amount of little sparks after uh, you know they just split after a shorter distance in the air also the flow is a little bit less uh, you know permanent and uh, you, you're going to be seeing in a few seconds with the uh, coro this is the uh, this is the coal roll. It's got more uh, a bigger flow, though, but and a little bit more uh, yellowish. You notice that the sparks are much less numerous. They spark much further away in the uh, in the trail. So uh, that's one of the good way to determine like uh, higher uh, lower carbon content in steel. One thing has to be done with this part here is uh, remove the paint and the, all the stuff on the side, make it as flat as possible because to measure on the uh, on the meter we're going to do a better job. But uh, it's pretty awkward to you know, man maneuver this on the uh, on the plate there. So this is uh, just a piece of steel. Uh, I guess you probably recognize this is a uh, Hagdis magnet. Watch your fingers. One thing to make sure, if your part becomes too hot and the magnet becomes too hot, you got no magnet no more. Be careful, the uh, plate behind the belt is steel, so it will attract you a little bit. There you go. So we make the surface, uh, you know, kind of flat enough. And naturally, these magnets are pretty strong. Pliers are required. My next step is to identify them because there's going to be one set in oil, one set in water. So, O and W for oil and water. Ha ha ha! Wow, I know. Okay, these are the options. My oil can. I got the water can or uh, water can. First pick is this one. You drop one of those red hot in there, even if it's full of water, it may just uh, make its way out of the uh, bucket just by making itself a hole. So, none of those, please. Another option now is uh, we have to heat these pieces up. There, uh, let's see. Let's put that in perspective. It's about uh, you know how big it is uh, regarding a torch like that. It's not a very big piece, but uh, heating this up completely with this kind of this kind of a torch is uh, is taking a long time. It needs a lot of energy to bring them uh, red hot. I mean, I have something else. If you got the, there are some bigger ones with uh, uh, much bigger or higher BTU output. That uh, would be uh, a good suggestion. The other option I'm going to use in the uh, oxyacetylene uh, torch, not a big one but uh, that's going to be good enough. Okay, next step is to uh, heat them up properly. We'll start with the uh, the water ones. Okay, we turn on fuel first, oxygen after. You want a flame that's very lightly combustible. Uh, I'm going to, to uh, not very easy, see this little second plume, paler a little bit, I mean not paler, but just at the end of the very, you see that it moves. It means it doesn't 100% burn the uh, the flammable material, the acetylene in there. This is going to give it, give it the. Uh, this is going to give a little bit of a protection. I mean, it's going to stop the oxygen from uh, getting right to the uh, the part. So let's heat this up. It uh, generally, generally, it's not very long with this. 
I don't have a big tip there, but uh, that would take about within, uh, within a minute. What you want to get is orangey, and uh, I'll show you uh, one feature. So it's getting orangey, 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 and you're going to be seeing some current in there, some just brighter zones in there. See on the side there, it's starting to appear. It means that the carbon in the, in the part is starting to uh, ignite a little bit. Not too much because the flame is combustion, but we're there. Come on, you. Okay, water one. So we'll do all the, we'll do all the other ones like that. And, uh, I'll be back. Also, you may notice that the hottest part of the flame is right at the end of this tip there. So we don't want to be so far away, but just close enough like this here. Okay, oil stuff now. <coughs> Same thing. There's a more precise way to do the um, heating up for the uh, hardening part, it's an oven, but uh, I'm doing it like uh, someone who uses bed frames will use a torch. So let's make it uh, realistic for uh, bed frame users. I'm visually appreciating the color here, so... Uh, there you go, dunked in oil. The next question now is, uh, did they get hard and how hard? This is a Sheffield file, so uh, good quality file. Let's see. Hard, hard, hard in oil now. Uh, pretty hard too. Uh, hard, hard. The, uh, fi the file is definitively skating on both oil and water uh, quenched. So let's uh, go to the next step. How hard are they now? As the first test now, we want to know how much, you know, how hard it is before we start even start doing something with it. Let's uh, test the uh, untreated piece. Uh, set that to test uh, testing zone, zero it, release. It's going to do one complete cycle. The indenter will do its pre uh, did its pre uh, pre pre dent and then now it's uh, indenting. After a little while, you check this. The untreated piece, as is from the uh, bed rail, is uh, 22 uh, Rockwell C. Not soft because normally if you get cold roll steel, it's going to be under uh, 10 Rockwell or even even softer than that. So this is already hardened. Uh, there's already some heat treatment into uh, when you get the bed frame just uh, from scratch. Oil, oil number one. I'm going to be trying to get the surface as good as possible. Maybe not exactly on the uh, side where I wrote the uh, the markings. So let's get this there. Get to the zero mark. See so this. Release. Let the indenter go right down to its uh, position. Bring it back. We are getting 64 rock Rockwell on the uh, on a C scale. This is kind of hard. Back to the table now. The ones in water. Uh, I mean, all the pieces test between 20 and 25 has uh, been just cut from the bed frame. They're pretty uh, pretty solid. They got a springy feeling when they just like a bed frame would usually do. Um, the water one, the one gave me uh, 55, the other one gave me 63. Uh, the number two I'll explain just in a few seconds, and the number three gave me about 60, 61, something uh, in that uh, area. Oil, 64 for number one, 57, 58 for the second one, around 60 for the uh, third one. Okay, let's do some explaining about this now. No results about uh, water. Okay, before uh, I was interrupted by the phone, uh, we seen that uh, the water quenched the uh, material had a few more problems than the uh, oil uh, quench material. This was uh, between 64 and 57, 58. 
this is the uh, oil uh, quenched they're still just quenched nothing not no special treatment for now uh, as we've seen the sample number two was giving uh, you know more serious problems as uh, number one gave me uh, more in inconsistencies um, number two main problem is uh let me just drop this there now that we're pretty much closer from it uh, you probably can see this here right up to here right up to up there and on the side there I think it's yeah it's going there a little bit but uh, this is where on the other side um, yeah we see it good the indent point is right there it just started around the uh, the indent the indent the, <laughs> the indent point <laughs> got uh, too many tongues okay um, this proves that uh, water quenching makes the part pretty much more brittle than if you go with uh, oil quenching also uh, using hot water just almost uh, you know like uh, near boiling water could probably help also pulling it out from the uh, the water while it's still you know pretty hot without just cooling it down totally would probably improve those uh, those characteristics I mean that's something to to work with bed frame stuff it's hard to find definite uh, specs about it and uh, it's not easy to uh, really like get a very consistent uh, material within uh, the years or the month or the batches so uh, to use at your own risk welding this uh, and using this as trailers you know uh, anything uh, anything that's uh, life-threatening I really don't suggest any welded parts uh, riveting parts uh, fastener mounted parts uh, use it exactly as it comes from the uh, you know as it's been used as a bed uh, bed frame it could uh, it could uh, be no problem but if you get it like welded or something you are uh, you're prone to do them um, or end up with these kinds of cracks and for uh, safety related material it's a no-no this is an oil uh, temp uh, hardened uh, part this is another the uh, part number two what we're going to do now is to try to get uh, this to let's say blue you know the blue state using the uh, propane torch is good enough because uh, we don't need to generate as much heat and slower heating is going to be better let's see what you can do I'll try to bring it as, as evenly as possible to uh, blue color Okay, we're getting brownish a little bit. Uh, getting some blue. We're letting the uh, heat diffuse in there. And this is getting to be uh, some kind of a bluish, uh, bluish color. The other side of this. Uh, this is the number three for the oil treated. Let's try to bring this one more yellowish color. Between yellow and brown. I'll be turning it a few times, so uh, this is more delicate. The least, uh, the least heat you want to input in there, the more delicate it gets. Let's flip it around a few times. I'm heating as slow as possible, trying to let the heat sink in. Oh, yellowish, brownish. Okay, this is water number three, but uh, to a yellow straw or kind of a color exposed to less heat this and then we're getting 52 hey now quick results water 
everything every every uh, material before tests between 20 and 25 are seed every uh, every uh, piece been tested they arrange into that as this is as manufactured as cut off from the uh, the bed frame uh, the hardening water the uh, number one two and three here the number one I got a uh, few I inconsistencies into this part which is like uh, 55 and 63 and uh, when it was brought to straw color uh, I would say uh, a little a little weird on this part, 32 and 43. Sometimes you get uh, uh, inconsistencies uh, within the part, I mean, uh, bad mixture or something like that. I wasn't going to perform uh, very much more tests on the uh, number two. It just fell crack like uh, just a, uh, you know, the indenter just uh, broke it. It was too brittle to, uh, you know, to support the uh, pressure of the uh, Rockwell meter. The number three tested uh, hardened at 61. Uh, it was blued, uh, blue colored, and uh, we got uh, more like uh, 52 and 52. I got two readings uh, after uh, some, uh, you know, rudimentary tampering. Oil, the number one stays uh, our reference. Number two, blue, uh, sorry, hardened, 57, 58, pretty consistent. Uh, blue colored, 51, 50 which is uh, the more you heat, the lower this will get. So the number three, it hardened at 60. Uh, straw color, 55, 53, the two readings. Pretty consistent. Some parts will read consistently and do, uh, you know, do pretty good. Also, I would suggest if you want to work with uh, bed frame stuff, use oil uh, quenching for hardening. This is more, I think it's uh, this is material, a little bit less rich than the uh, actual water, cold water. You could maybe warm up the water uh, just near boiling point or something, or you could also heat up the oil before the quench. That's another solution to sometimes, uh, you won't get as hard on the uh, on the hardening, but uh, you will get le less uh, brittleness. It needs to be tempered, and normally these are, uh, you know, even like uh, the, these temperings are still very hard temperings. Conclusion on this, uh, there are tons of alloys, you know, like 4140, P20, uh, 01, W1, uh, 1045, 80, uh, 8120. Uh, but uh, these are very expensive to get. And uh, this here, the, the bed frame, uh, the bed frame uh, angle iron is uh, pretty uh, readily available. You just do to your, uh, you know, garbage day. Uh, no, it's easy to find. So uh, I would suggest that. Uh, I think oil quenching may be a good uh, good way to get uh, a little bit less brittleness. Also, word of advice on this: never weld this as a something that's got to be used as a people carrying people trailers or anything that sort because you're gonna kill someone or you're gonna make lots of damage. This is very dangerous, as you've seen uh, as welded, uh, not as welded, but uh, heated up and just quenched. It is very brittle. Um, it's probably some, maybe, I would say some, it behaves like some 10, 1045, maybe 1065 or something. It hardens pretty well. You could probably make some blades with that. I'm not sure uh, what would be the, uh, the final, you know, let's say the final outcome as a uh, brittleness or uh, breaking chips or whatever from the blade. But uh, this can be tried. This can be forged. This can be uh, worked. Uh, as something, like I say, you want to make a frame, you want to make a, uh, use it to make solid stuff there's no problem about riveting or uh, fa you know using fasteners that's uh, that's a way that's a safe way to uh, use it to make structures or anything like that this is pretty solid the consistency of the grain is maybe not as controlled as some other uh, you know some other very high quality pieces of steel or whatever but for the price someone get can get it uh, that, that's a good deal something to experiment with i would say like the the poor man's uh, metal, uh, hardenable metal so uh, have fun, enjoy, and uh, any questions or any uh, any issues or just uh, you want to add something, just the uh, description box down there is right there for that, or the comments. I would say the comments. Yeah, use the comment. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to dislike. <laughs> Don't forget to forget. Release. I think something's wrong with that.
something's wrong with this.